Hey, how's it going? This is Drawn Smiles, so let's go and have some fun. Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is Drawn Smiles, and welcome back to Valiant Hearts, The Great War. Well, I got a bit to... Uh, to say, I actually recorded about an hour's worth of this game, and figured out that my recording system didn't have my mic hooked up to it. So I gotta redo it all. <clears throat> But that is alright. I wanted to post a video today, so I'm gonna post a video today. Get out of here, and I'm just gonna do a little speed run, I suppose. Because I still wanna show you guys all this stuff. Here we go. Yeah. yeah, that's a good doggy. I believe that dog is a Doberman Pinscher. It is the gas. We're gonna blow it up, I tell you. We're gonna blow it up. Oh, I think I found it the wrong way, maybe. Oh, never mind. Ta-da! We gotta self-destruct it. We gotta make all the gas not go outside. Gotta stay inside. Inside the system. But yeah, we're, if we're in Germany, I believe our doggy, and the way he looks, I'm guessing it's a Doberman, so. Yes, I understand, doggy. Pull it up. Yes, and thank you. I will still be showing the where the collectibles is at because I still got the recordings. It's just it doesn't record my voice. So do not worry. You will see where the collectibles are at. You must know where to get the collectibles and I will show you. They just stood up there where I did all the work. <coughs> yes, thank you. Ta da! Yeah, let's go. It is the blimp. No. Why must they? Oh, they're not even. Oh, they filled with gas. I was about to say they didn't even. Oh. He climbed up while we went down. But yeah, I was gonna say, uh, they didn't even blow up. But they didn't have to, they failed with the gas. You hurry up, why'd you go up there? Should've went down here with me. How dare he. Alright. And when he gets in there... Does he? What? 
I'm gonna help you. I got this. What are you doing in the basket? Saved you. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. I somewhat enjoy their voice acting. The, the way you can actually understand them. They're not just speaking gibberish or anything. They're actually... You can actually understand them. Yeah, he's saying we gotta get out of here and stuff. And who is that? Yeah, you're just gonna jump to a vehicle moving. Her name was Anna, a Belgian student living in Paris. She was hard on the trail of her missing father. For once, fate smiled on them. They were all going in the same direction. But while approaching Vimy, a German squadron spotted them. Yep, yeah, we get to drive the vehicle. Yep, yeah, get it. Gotta make sure not to get hit by these bombs. Or shot at. Yeah. Drive it. Crazy driver. I am a professional driver. I may not have my license, but I am the best. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. They're gonna do that to me. Yeah. Get it. Get it. Yeah. We got some mines up ahead. We can dodge them. Oh. Right in between them. They're using up all this ammo just for one vehicle with three people and a dog. I mean, ammo, bombs, all this. It seems like overkill, but to be fair, it's not because they haven't killed him. They haven't got him. Oh man, I got it. The vehicle survived a hit from a bomb. No! Buddy! The American! The Americano! The coffee! No! No, I'm just Alright. I did this part and I did the next part. So I finished Night of April 22nd, 1915. So I completely finished Chapter 1. That's where I'm at at the moment. In this video, I would be doing this part and then the next part would be included in the next video. And then, uh, we'll all be caught up. They don't know a dang. Yeah. See? We run with them. We run together. Come on. Yeah, get in there. Let's go, doggy. All right, the doggy goes in there and gets that. And these guys don't even know.
They don't know a thing. But to be fair, they probably think it's their dog because it was their dog. They don't know that, you know, their dog is basically an undercover spy at this point. Yes, that's a good doggy. It's a good doggy for me. Gotta hurry. There we go. Oh yeah, play that music. Wait for him to look away. Right now. Yes. He's climbing back up, but it's too late. We're already across. Oh. Distract him. Yes, and I'll knock him out. Yes. This. Even if I do this, he's still gonna die, isn't he? Maybe. Maybe he'll still die, but he feels better now. Maybe. Possibility. Get in there, doggy. We got things to do. Things to blow up, that is. Yes. <laughs> oh wow, he went away just in time for me to come over here. There we go. Oh, can I make it? And I did. Yeah, and that's another thing. TNT blew up and these guys, they just don't care. I think they're just, they might just be used to it though. Like, it's a war, so they're used to explosions and stuff. Very possible. Come with me, doggy. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, he didn't see me. That was a close one. He was looking right at me. And then I go in here. Move this. Climb it. Yeah, I think what happened with my recording system is there was probably an update or something. And the system, my editing system, or not, not my editing, my recording system, I believe, might have kicked out my mic after the update. That I gave it. Or that it possibly had to have. And I didn't realize until like an hour of recording. He missed. How are you gonna miss like that? You get one chance to attack me, and you miss. Move this. At least, though, I will say... That... Oh, I gotta go over two more. One and two. 
But I was gonna say, at least it was only... I finished chapter one. Oh, I gotta bring that over here. What am I doing? So, at least I didn't, like, continue playing for a chapter two or something. Because that would have been something. For the lever. I mean, it was still like an hour of me playing. Well, it was still a bit of me playing. Might not have been exactly an hour, but it was still a bit of me playing and reading the history facts and stuff. But that's all right. No big deal. Because it's a pretty decent game. We so show them what that happens when they mess with us. Fire the cannon. Baron von Dorf had escaped again, but Emil had still managed to find medicine for Freddy. Thank you, my friend. They were quickly back on the road again. Their journey would take them to Rans, where they would at last pick up the trail of the elusive Baron and his Zeppelin. That's what happens when you step away from the team. Why'd he leave by himself? All right, onto the reading. April 22nd, 1915. Call is alive. I caught sight of him flying a Zeppelin heading south. We are going looking for him again tomorrow with Anna and Freddy. April 22nd, 1915. Those mm, shells nearly did it for me. There is no way I'm giving up so close to my goal. Apparently their leader is called Von Dorf. I'm going to get him. Everybody else are just pawns in his game to me. April 22nd, 1915. This morning in... Yippers. Von Dorf made us capture some scientists. The army is interested in his work and apparently he'll help Germany win the war. He seems like a nice fellow, but it is hard to find out anything else about him. Von Dorf is keeping him closely guarded. Not a day goes by that I don't think about my Marie and my little Victor. I haven't seen them for eight months now. I miss them so much. Canadian identification tag. At the start of the war, Canadian identification tags were formed by a large aluminum disc, which was because they were an emergency issue and had a unique shape. They were soon replaced by standard British tags, as were those of all British Empire forces. Urine soaked cloth. The only defense against a gas attack before masks were introduced was to cover the nose with a urine soaked handkerchief. Urine reacts with chlorine directly in the handkerchief to form less noxious products, limiting the effects. It was not the most hygienic solution, but it was always better than a lung full of hydrochloric acid. Letter from a Canadian Soldier, 21 April 1915. Dear parents, we are in Belgium, a truly flat land that reminds me of our Winnipeg Plains. The big difference is that it is so damp here, which makes the cold even colder. The guys and I are going to make you proud of us. The Canadians will be the big heroes of this war. I will write again soon, Stephen. Gas Canister Deployment Strategy Gas canister deployment strategies were simple, but they did depend on the weather, especially on winds. Gas use required a constant downwind towards enemy lines to avoid the gas returning to its sender. 
Any battle plans were therefore dependent on the weather forecast. Belgian Shako The Belgian army's distinctive Shako resembled a top hat with a rim replaced by a visor. The Shako was replaced by the Yusur cap, a soft cap with flaps that could be pulled down over the ears. The cap was called the Yusur because Belgian soldiers massed behind the river Yusur to hold off the German advance. Pocket Watch Time was an important factor in soldiers' lives, and military strategies for attacks and rolling barrages were based on tight chronological synchronicity. Pocket watches were the only way to tell the time. The Battle of Ypres Ypres was a key strategic town in Belgium, especially for the British. It was the gateway to the north, and thus to Britain. Canadian troops were deployed in the front line, and they proved their endurance. Periscope To absorb enemy trenches without drawing fire, officers and soldiers used periscopes, mirrors mounted in a tube that could be raised above the parapet with no risk to health. Infantry man is flask. Soldiers frequently suffered from thirst and water supplies were far from regular. All soldiers had canteens in which they transported water and also wine. Some also had flasks or goat skins which were less heavy to carry. Vial of Nevroth nine. To combat problems of morale and physical fitness, army doctors sometimes distributed Nevroth nine injections composite of magnesium and potassium intended to give weary soldiers a hearty boost. Letter from a German soldier, 21 April 1915. Dear Andrea, we've been stuck down this hole since January and I can't stand it anymore. I'm sick to the back teeth with living like a rat. I really miss life as it was before, strolling beneath the linden trees with you. I even miss working in the factory. All my love, your dear Ten of sardines. Soldiers were all fed by their respective armies, but they also received parcels from back home to improve their daily lot. Tens of fish or pate gave them a more copious nutritional meal than their daily army fare. British coins. While the war raged on, life continued in the economy too. The war economy was composed of both barter and currency systems. Soldiers purchased provisions and towns using their pay. In 1914, the pay of a British private in a line regiment was one shilling a day. The standard king is shilling. Obligatory deductions were made for a wife and children. Six pence for the wife and one pence a day for each child. Nowadays, one shilling has the estimated purchasing power of about 3.21 GBP, 5.42 US dollars. In 1971, the shilling was replaced by the five pence coin thanks to decimalization and dependability in combat to the Allies. 6,000 Canadian lives were lost in the battle in April 1915. First Gas Attack April 22, 1915, at Ypres came the first gas attack in history. 5,730 cylinders of chlorine were opened by the Germans in favorable winds. Chlorine gas caused Thorns to the eyes, skin, and lungs, even through clothes and rubber boots. The effects were devastating. The only defense found by the Canadians was to cover their noses with a urine-soaked handkerchief. Zeppelin Bombardment Zeppelins were invented in 1900 by the German Count von Zeppelin. But the first long-distance flight didn't take place until 1908. Zeppelins weren't much slower than the aircraft of the period and were first used in reconnaissance. They could also fly at higher altitudes, so from 1915, they were used to bomb civilians in London and Paris. The Dogs of War It is estimated that by 1918, the Germans had employed 30,000 dogs, while the Allies employed 20,000. Dogs were recruited from dog pounds in the police force, while many families also enlisted their pets. Dogs had a number of woes, as sentries and scouts, and postal liaison and equipment transport, and locating casualties and explosives, and as mascots. The main breeds deployed were German Shepherds, Doberman Pinsers, 
and boulevards. The trenches. Between the sides, there was an imbalance in trench conditions. After securing a head start in trench construction, the Germans reinforced them with iron and concrete, while the Allies had to wallow in mud. The Allies changeover policy may be contributed to this. Allied soldiers had seven-day shifts on the front, whereas German soldiers were allocated a specific zone for an indeterminate period, giving them a chance to settle in. The Labyrinth Vimy and Neuville saint vest were two positions the Germans were quick to fortify. Here they built their Labyrinth, a complex network of trenches and tunnels connected to underground sleeping quarters allied. Armies unsuccessfully attempted to seize this key position on numerous occasions. Due to the huge number of casualties in late 1915, the position was declared impregnable. Memorial to the Moroccan Division the Moroccan division, whose motto was No Fear No Mercy, combined soldiers from across French colonial Africa and the Foreign Legion. The division included Moroccan Zouaves and Tunisian and Algerian infantrymen. In 1915, the division seized Bimi Ridge, but in the absence of backup from Battalion HQ, they were forced to retreat after two days. The Moican Division is the only division whose flags were decorated with the Legion of Honor. Naval Cannons Naval Cannons were capable of firing heavy-duty 800-pound shells. Due to their weight, they were mounted on special rails for transport. The firing platforms. In the event of a retreat, artillerymen were instructed to destroy the cannons rather than let them fall into enemy hands. Alright, that's going to be the video for today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and hit the notification button. Until next time, God bless.